flower child from the sun rays, but I run fade, got a punch drunk. My providence, they don't love us. They rather treat us like an animal. They wonder why we on A. Escaping shit, I'm off the cannabis. Middle fingers in tandem, going tantrum. Yelling f 12 with a big smile, young phantom. Hi, mama, on camera. Coming live from the mud pit, we don't take post beef for granted. I plan to keep it stress free, live and die young. I leave it on the canvases. Split up some with my battery. Dumb plane to the wheels fall, I'm on road rage. I've been on a run. My third high open. Been trying to kill emotion. Back for the slow. I've been on a run. My third high open. Yeah, yeah. I've been living out the moon roof with it. I'm in tune with my senses. Kill the tune with my sentence every time. Yeah. I've been in the mood, got a feeling. What we doing? Got a human, they ain't used to it. Rely me to the pledge when I said it. No caps on the butter till I see black. And I still ride for it. Done a couple flats. I've been down better. Been slayed to a nine to five. Now we're booming. Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? What is happening? Welcome back, Pattern Watchers. Welcome back. It's good to be back, ladies and gentlemen, bringing into you that midweek reversal for Thursday for Bitcoin. New York live stream, ladies and gentlemen, get acquainted. What's good, Mike Dutch? I hope the mic sounds well. I have been doing a few tests, so I'm hoping that it's actually nice and clear and crisp for you all because we're about to bring some madness in the chart ladies and gentlemen we're going to be talking pretty fast we're going to be filing off all those orders we've got some interesting behavior currently in bitcoin on the book map and we'll be diving into that today we're going to be looking exclusively at price action across the board i've missed you all mad love and respect to everyone passing through next week we're going to be bringing even more fire to you ladies and gentlemen because we're going to be anticipating not price action but the face reveal. How about that one, ladies and gentlemen? I've been talking about this face reveal for quite some time. I need to sit down with Mike and get this thing sorted out. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, if you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Share the live. You know what the flavor is. Let's start having a conversation, guys. Let's roll with it. Okay, okay, let's get into business, ladies and gentlemen. Let's kill the music. I hope everyone is doing well this afternoon. We're going to be talking about Bitcoin. We're going to be talking about the euro. We're going to be talking about the dominance of the dollar. And we're going to be understanding why Bitcoin cannot go any further if the dominance of the dollar does not start to falter. Well, what reasons will there be for Bitcoin to actually go back up? It's got nothing to do with mining. It's got nothing to do with anyone talking about Bitcoin. It's all to do with where Wall Street's head is at because Bitcoin is last to move, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what we're going to do is we're first, we're going to dive into the book map. It's been a while since we've seen this. So let's just expand the chart and understand what can we make from the book map itself. The book map is the auction place. It's the relationship between the bid and the ask. When the bids are being hit, that means price is coming down because traders are selling. And the only way that they can sell is if Mr. Market Maker is buying. At the same token, ladies and gentlemen, when they lift the ask, it means traders are buying, which means Mr. Market Maker is selling. And as it stands in the chart right now, ladies and gentlemen, we have 1,500 Bitcoin at 21,990. Before that, we have 21,900. We got 13,000 Bitcoin, sorry, 1,300 Bitcoin at the 21,900 zone. Currently, Bitcoin is trading above the VWAP, and that's good news for us. It doesn't look like there's much commitment down at the lows, ladies and gentlemen. So the principle would say that if Bitcoin can hold this VWAP right here, ladies and gentlemen, then we would anticipate Bitcoin to start making a move towards the upside and get this liquidity taken. But as long as the liquidity stays in the chart, because as long as it's red and it stays static, it means that there is interest to get orders filled at that point. OK, so whilst we are understanding that Bitcoin ideally should be coming up. Let's go to the candlesticks to understand if that's going to be the case. We know the liquidity is there, ladies and gentlemen. The question is, will they actually run towards that zone? Let's break this down and start looking closer into the chart. So here we go. Firstly, dominance of the dollar, ladies and gentlemen. I said it in last night's video. 
The only way that the dollar can actually drop is if the Fed does show that it's going to start getting aggressive with its approach towards the interest rates. It's hurting trade, ladies and gentlemen. The dominance of the dollar is going to continuously hurt trade globally because it means that foreign borrowers who are looking to pick up dollar dollar itself are going to have to pay more and that's going to suppress everything this dominance of the dollar needs to twitch switch sorry twitch it needs to actually reverse and start coming down now if we actually look at the chart itself ladies and gentlemen we can see that the dominance of the dollar is showing some topping like formation it's just been moving up too much nice sharp move up we would anticipate the dominance of the dollar to start rolling over and start turning to the downside if it can't turn round and it keeps on going, Bitcoin does not stand a chance, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the truth right there. Because any asset against the US dollar is currently taking a nosedive. Look, have a look at EURUSD, taking a nosedive to the downside, coming into the recovery of the vector candle zone, right in that area right here. We would anticipate a little bit of a reversal from this point. Uh, they've broken the daily open. Euro has been experiencing such a hard time right now. And of, of course, the meeting today wasn't that great. And the news that come out earlier on wasn't favorable for the Euro. So Euro is naturally going to release and come down lower in towards the final vector candle recovery zone in this area right here. More importantly, dollar yen looking like it wants to make another move to the upside to come back up into the recovery of this vector zone right here. Now we're going to roll over to Bitcoin and understand how likely is Bitcoin going to actually come down and start taking back the vector candle zones right here. Now remember, we are in the US Brink session right now. We would anticipate Bitcoin to start breaking down, coming into the vector candle recovery zones. But it's not all, we, you know, we're not out of the woods just yet. Okay, because as much as Bitcoin can hold this area right here on the 200 EMA, we haven't seen the test of the daily open. So that leads me into the understanding of this. Check this out. The break of the VWAP has just happened. The Delta is not really coming in that strong, ladies and gentlemen, which is really important for us. We need to see the Delta coming in aggressively because then that would tell us that the move down lower is not as bad as we anticipate it to be. The liquidity seems to be stalling in this area. I want to see it hold this area because if this liquidity stays, that means Bitcoin is going to initiate a stop hunt low, which is standard for the New York session with the midweek reversal point to come back up and eat that liquidity. Remember, Mr. Market Maker is always going to trap the trader into believing that one thing is happening against the next. The more you align yourself with that way of thinking, ladies and gentlemen, the more likely you're going to be able to grab high probability trades and exploit the movements of the market maker. Terran Crypto, three months. What's going on, my friend? Here we go. We've got a question here. Tino, mad love and respect from Massachusetts. What's going on, my friend? Um, how much resistance is really at the 25.8 zone with the 200 weighted um, um, exponential moving average? Word up to my atom holders. Mad love and respect. Okay, then cool. So firstly, look, where are we right now in the chart? This is what we need to understand. Is Bitcoin getting ready to move up or is it getting ready to move down? The daily open hasn't been tested, which is a little bit of a cause for concern, ladies and gentlemen. We really need to be mindful of that. More importantly... We need to understand where the liquidity resides, okay? So in front of you right now is the liquidation heat map for Bitcoin, all right? Now look at this. Let's wait for that to load up. Here we go. In front of us right now, this is Bitcoin in the last 12 hours. The next pool of liquidity sits at the 21,850 zone where there's half a billion dollars worth of liquidations in the chart, all right? Why am I looking at that point? Well, price is all the way down here, ladies and gentlemen. OK, so they're already eating some liquidity. We've got 22 million down there and naturally they're going to eat some of that liquidity anyway. But let's just look at Bitcoin over the last month. What's been going on in the higher time frames? Because remember, market makers can't move the market too aggressively. They have to progressively move the market. We've already eaten liquidity to the downside. So the longs have been paying the price. There is a ton of liquidity. $22 billion worth of long liquidations at 19,300, ladies and gentlemen. And then we've got short liquidations at 19 billion at 25.3. The principle would have it. If Bitcoin holds this range, ladies and gentlemen, then we are likely to see Bitcoin make its way up. It might not happen overnight, ladies and gentlemen, but we would like to see Bitcoin make its way up to start eating the liquidity of the shorts in this zone. Now, remember, I always say it to you guys, always pay yourselves because if you ain't paying yourselves, what's the point in you trading? Bitcoin comes down now to hit that liquidation point of the, of the longs that came in in the Asian session from last night. They've recovered that green vector candle, left a little bit on the table as well, going into the smaller timeframes themselves. Let's go to the five minute timeframe. What do we see? 
we can see like this topping like formation stopping volume candle right here principle would have it that if they are looking to try and come back up and show the narrative of them favoring higher prices we would expect bitcoin to come back up into these zones yesterday's high would be the zone that i would expect bitcoin to come into why because that's the last point they were able to grab interest from traders at look at the vector candle up there and that zone is right here. 50% of that range will take us towards the 21,855 zone. Let me just increase the actual font on there. Can you see that clear as day, ladies and gentlemen? Let me just bring that up for you. There we go for my mobile phone users. Cool. Red vector candle comes down, testing that 200 EMA. It's okay. Bitcoin isn't looking like it's going to break down. If it violates this range and continues, then we are going to see a test of the 800. There are two spots where Bitcoin can be tested. It can test the 200 and move up, or it can test the 800 and move up. Because if it does invalidate the 800 EMA, Bitcoin is coming back into the imbalance of the green vector candles sat at the lows right there. What's going on? Let me just check in with the chat right now, guys. What is going on? I hope you're all doing well. B Stu, what's happening? Bella B, what's good? Mike Dutch, Spikey, all the patrons in the chat. Channel. just a quick word as well ladies and gentlemen if you are going to be new to the patreon itself do not consider joining the patreon until the start of the new month because you'll be charged twice okay so be mindful of that wait for the start of a new month to roll in more importantly ladies and gentlemen if you are new to the channel okay there are a lot of changes that are going to be happening. Make your way through the playlist as much as you can. Get to the live streams because the basis of the hybrid system is explained to you in real time, ladies and gentlemen. And this is what it's all about. Understanding Mr. Market Maker's behavior. Now, let me just get over to Ethereum for a split second, ladies and gentlemen. Ethereum looks like it's doing great to hold this range right now. 50 EMA holding on the five minute time frame, rolling over to the one hour time frame itself. It just looks like Ethereum doesn't want to stop moving higher. It's trending nicely to the upside. That's what we want to see. A nice break above the 200 EMA, which is what we wanted. And if you remember in the live stream that we spoke about last week, no, on Sunday night on the totals chart, what we want to be focusing on is assets that are trading above the 200 EMA on the totals chart. So here we go. The majority of assets are trading below the 200 EMA. You want to focus on assets trading above the 200 EMA. So when we go back into that, we can see Ethereum is the one asset that is trading above the 200 EMA. Green vector candle recovery has actually happened. And we are now waiting for the US Brinks to initiate its flavor to move price back up into what we would understand be the vector candle recovery zone up here. Problem that we've got, ladies and gentlemen, is Ethereum has come back into this last zone that they sold from and they did exactly just that. They sold away from that zone now the problem that we've got is the brinks box itself when you look closer the brinks box and price action overall is compressed all right we haven't come from a high we haven't come from a low the brinks box itself is following exactly what the uk session has done we are waiting for new york to react to today's news announcements that come out for the dollar itself so check this out the dollar has shown preliminary GDP. It's come in at minus 0.6. OK, so it's a good figure because they projected minus 0.7. But the great thing is, is unemployment claims have come in at 243,000. So there's less people claiming benefit. Now, in order for us to understand that relationship with the dollar index itself, principle would say that we should see the dominance of the dollar rolling over. Because if traders see that the employment rate in the US is all good, then there's no reason to seek safety. That principle should say that we should see the dominance of the dollar rolling over. That should mean that Bitcoin should start coming back up. Okay? GBP USD rolling over, coming to the downside because of the dollar itself. All right? Dollar yen moving up. We need it to move down because dollar yen has had a whale of a time, ladies and gentlemen. And that, like that with the dollar dominance itself needs to start rolling over. And we would see the dominance of the dollar come down, which would lead dollar yen to come down. Given that the China stimulus plan as well is favoring the yen, we should see dollar coming down across the board. But the only person that can make that happen is Powell. And that's going to be discussed in tomorrow in the actual FOMC Fed Chair Powell having a conversation about what his stance is. Is it hawkish? Is it dovish? The actual, where is it? The Jackson Hole Hypnosium itself currently. We've got financial guys all over the world coming to have a meeting to talk about the current economic situation. And my understanding is that these guys are in essence going to try and sway Mr. Powell to be a little bit more hawkish we want them to increase the interest rates if the dominance of the dollar is going to falter because we can't move forward if that's going to be the case 
We just can't move forward. There is no chance for Bitcoin to go up if dollar keeps on winning. Some guys are talking about dollar dominance going up to 121 or even 110. Well, we're at 108 right now. So that's going to be a bit of a problem for us. Let's have a look at gold. Where are traders' heads at when it comes to gold? So right now on the one-hour time frame for gold itself, you can see we ain't got the movement just yet. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got another five, five, ten more minutes until the actual futures markets opens so we've got gold coming back up so it gives us the understanding that traders are seeking safety they're coming away from a retrace continuation so what we want to know is is gold getting ready to formulate a w formation in preparation for a move up are they waiting for the first week of september ladies and gentlemen where we're going to get the non-farm payrolls which i'll bring it to you right here check this out next month we've got a lot happening man look at this Unemployment claims again, ISM Manufacturing Index, non-farm payrolls taken on the Friday, 2nd of September, which happens to be my birthday, ladies and gentlemen. 37 years young, man. What a crazy time. So the first week on every Friday at the start of each month is when the non-farm payrolls come out. So we are expecting volatility. Is price getting prepared for that narrative? Let me just go back into Bitcoin itself and have a look at what's going on right here. Now, there's a lot of guys on YouTube expecting Bitcoin to collapse and come down lower. Now, listen, this is on the one hour time frame. Go to the four hour time frame itself, guys, and you can see Bitcoin is at the last zone, which it moved away from. Principle would have it that we would expect Bitcoin to move up. Stop in volume candle one, stop in volume candle two. Is this going to be a drop? retrace continuation lower is the liquidity going to get taken by bitcoin all the way down here because we do have 22 billion dollars worth of long liquidations down at 19,300 but ultimately guys it's all about what time frame you are going to be trading yes i'm talking about bitcoin going up yes i'm talking about bitcoin going down what time frame are you trading ladies and gentlemen take the information and apply it to your trades let's just bring this back to the book map itself and let's have a look at what's going on so the delta doesn't look like it's increasing as much right here we've got 778 bitcoin being absorbed right here i Ideally, if the delta does continue to come in and this liquidity here stays, it's actually been added. It's got 1,416 Bitcoin, 1,555 Bitcoin at the two price points, 21,920 and 22,000 is where the liquidity is in the chart. There's nothing going on down here, ladies and gentlemen. And New York, in principle, should be bringing that fire to us, man. New York should bring the fire and that they should actually initiate a reversal because that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for the Thursday midweek reversal because Bitcoin has spent too much time in this so retracing back into the 50 ema right whilst we're waiting for that ladies and gentlemen it's 20 past two give me your coins guys blow up the chat give me your coins i'm going to start off with wave let's have a look at wave wave looking like the same thing got a red uh, green vector candle at the lows down here ideally if we want to see price moving up we want to see it move back down first okay now give me your coins ladies and gentlemen so we can get this going we've got 10 more minutes until new york starts bringing in that fire and i'm going to start speaking at pretty fast speeds if you are new to the channel slow down the video ladies and gentlemen otherwise listen quick here we go Let's have a look. Come on, give me your coins. Crow, let's have a look at Crow. First person come in. First person, first serve. Let's go with it. All right, Qcoin, crow.com. Now remember, here's the first thing you want to do. Roll over to the totals chart. Check this out. Here's the totals chart. Now we're going to look for altcoins, all right? So what do we see on the altcoin chart? They are all at the 50 EMA. What does that tell me? It tells me that I want to be paying attention to assets above the 50 EMA on the four-hour time frame. So where are my coins? Here we go. I'm just going to pull up random coins that I can see. Solana, USDT, here we go. Right, where's Solana right now? Is it above? No, it's below the 50 EMA. No interest in Solana. Here we go. What else is it? Ape. Let's have a look at Ape, ladies and gentlemen. USDT. Let me bring crypto up. There we go. Ape. Okay, then. So it's sort of at the 50 EMA on the four hour time frame. This green vector candle could be a little bit of a problem for Ape, but we would expect price to reverse from this range if it does manage to hit it, because the principle would say that we would anticipate this W formation to start rolling out into the chart. What else have we got, ladies and gentlemen? Um. What else? Let me see. Cake. Cake for my stakers out there. Here we go. Cake is moving up nicely above the 50 EMA. That's the first thing you want to be paying attention to. Cake is now above the 50 EMA. That's good news for us. Why? Because as long as it's above the 50 EMA, it's now against the narrative of what's going on across the board. If it can hold this range, ladies and gentlemen, go into the smaller time frames, goes into the, um, if it can hold this range right here, where we at $4.00. All right, recovered of the green vector candle zone, happy days, compression of the moving averages. Principle would say we would expect volatility to come in to lead price up towards the high ADR, which comes into the violet vector candle recovery in the zone. So cake is the first one that we need to pay attention to. Let's have a look at link, USDT, roll chain link. Here we go. Is it above the 50 EMA on the four hour time frame? No, it's not, ladies and gentlemen, struggling. And the reason why I want to find assets above the 50 EMA is because... 
that would tell me that when everything does decide to go up above the 50 EMA on the total market cap chart, the assets that are trading above the 50 EMA would then initially come back down, test the 50, and then move back up, as opposed to having to break above it, retrace, and then continue. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you've got the 50 EMA like this, ladies and gentlemen, all right, this is the 50 EMA, and price is down here, all right? You've got this movement. It's easier for you to project out on, a, on an asset if it can break above the 50 EMA and be above it, so that when everything else starts to move up, this move down would lead to the continuation to the upside. The problem that you've got with an asset that is trading below the 50 EMA is this. If it's going below it, it might retrace back into the 50 and falter from that point. You don't want to be in that situation. That's why I say to everyone, always wait for the retrace. Wait for the rise, the retrace, and then the continuation to the upside. And then consider your entries in and around this zone or even taking a safer trade into that zone to ride the momentum to the upside. Next asset. How long we got? Seven more minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Near. Let's have a look at near. Near USDT. Man, bringing this fire, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to be back. It is great to be back. Here we go. 50 EMA on the four-hour time frame. Struggling, but the good news is it's recovered the green vector candles in this range. Principle would have it that if we do see near showing strength, we would expect a bit more of a retrace, come and tap yesterday's low and consolidate inside of this zone and show vectors in this area. You want to see vector candles appearing here, and then you want to see vector candles appearing here on the shifting out of the zone. So principally, you would expect smaller movements coming down aggressive and then shifting out to the upside to test the narrative and break above the 50 EMA, which would then lead the 200 EMA and the 50 to compress and kiss the chart together. Okay, next coin. What have we got? Um, mana. Let's have a look at mana. USDT. Here we go. Decentraland. Okay. Here we, all right. What we got here? Below the 50 EMA. Same principle. Give me a coin that's above the 50 EMA. Atom. Let's have a look at Atom. Here we go. Now, Atom. Sticking with the narrative. Look at that. Atom is not above the 50 EMA on the four hour. It's above the 200 EMA on the four hour time frame. Testing that 800 EMA. There's more strength. Now, listen. If the market overall decides to roll over, Atom has got the test of the 13 EMA retrace. Test of the 50 EMA retrace. Test of the 200 EMA retrace. When the market starts to turn back up, Atom will follow this journey and it will bounce at the 50 EMA because everything across the board would have crossed over the 50 EMA, but Atom would be the leader. That's what I'm trying to say to you. You're looking for the leader of the move. Atom is contributing to price it's outperforming the altcoin market in principle. Likewise, Ethereum is doing exactly the same thing. Let me just bring this back up to you. Ethereum, outperforming the overall market. It's just above the 50 EMA and the 200 EMA. Let me just quickly check on Bitcoin for a second. Not really seeing that movement. What we got? Five more minutes until the New York futures market start to roll out. Let me just get some information on the New York futures markets itself. Um, where is my chart for a minute? Let me just get this up here. No, we're not on this one. Viz, there we go. Let's check this out. Let me just go into crypto. No, let's go to the futures markets itself. Where are the futures happening right now? Okay, then. So it looks as though dollar still trading lower. We've got S&P moving up crude oil. FIDA, CAD, JPY. Okay, then. So I'm, I'm using this to gauge where is the interest overall and what we're likely to expect moving forward in the actual futures markets itself. Let's just go over to EXO charts for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get this sorted out because it doesn't seem to be sticking to my understanding of loading this chart up. Here we go. Happy days. Let's roll out. Done. All right, then. So this is Bitcoin on EXO charts. What do we need to understand about Bitcoin on EXO charts? We need to pay attention to the delta. The delta is so important when you're looking at the footprint on Bitcoin. What do you need to know about the Delta? The thing you need to know about it is this, the presence of Delta. For example, you can see it says 50% down here, but pay attention to the time, the time that the candlestick takes to form. All right. This candlestick right here took 56 minutes to give us 50% Delta. Whereas this candlestick right here took 26 minutes, um, 26% and it only took half the time, sorry, 33 minutes to form the Delta, but the volume came in less. Is that Mr. Market Maker trying to hold the range? You want to see the Delta be being positive at the lows. 
So all my exo charts players, you want to see the delta showing strength at the lows. You don't want to see the green delta appearing at the highs. Why? Because that's where they set the trap to go short. Look what happened up here. You had a 38% delta that formed in 10 minutes and $30 million worth of longs were opened inside of this zone. Retail traders stepping in, Moonboy engaged, happy days to the upside. And then what happens? $2.9 million worth of longs were opened at the highest point, previous day's high at 21,878. Then what happens? The delta is negative. There's a divergence. Bang, it drops. It rips the range to the downside. The best trap by Mr. Market Maker to make the retail trader believe that Bitcoin is getting ready to moon out. That's the perfect time for Mr. Market Maker to reverse price, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into the chart right now, guys. We've got a couple of more minutes until the New York futures actually open up. Okay, what have we got here? So Bitcoin on the 50 minute time frame has spiked down, come back into the vector candle recovery zone. Looks like a bit of a promise, ladies and gentlemen. Could we see Bitcoin coming back up? Let's bring the Bitcoin, um, the book map up. Here we go. All right, then. So now we're testing that VWAP, ladies and gentlemen. That liquidity is still present. 1,387 Bitcoin at 21,920. And we got 22,000 at 1,500 Bitcoin right there. So yeah, 1,579 Bitcoin at 22,000. The liquidity looks like it's staying static. Red vector candle forming at the lows for the US Brink stop hunt low. Rise is what we would expect. And that would be Thursday's midweek reversal. Remember, we've got the narrative that they look like they want to be hitting price higher. The nearest price point in the chart is the 22K zone ladies and gentlemen if the volatility comes in and if the m2 pivot point confirms where's the m2 zone m2 zone got confirmed down here psychological high and daily open haven't been tested so it's all based on if bitcoin can hold this range right now let me just quickly roll over to the dollar index itself dollar index is still stalling at the highs whoops nice little push up there euro usd what's that saying euro usd mm, sort of trying to make a little bit of a recovery but it's not really sustainable let's have a look at oil oil's made a nice move to the upside which will then tell me that gold, um, usd cad should be trading lower no usd cad is moving up coming up into this zone right here we would expect that if oil goes up dollar cad should be going down CAD JPY starting to roll over. Patrons of the channel, we've been keeping an eye on this zone. It looks like it wants to roll over and come down lower. We need dollar yen to start rolling over. This fast move up is shaking out all the shorts in the zone to effectively get that liquidity trapped up. Daily open hasn't been tested and it looks like it might actually try and take that from now up until later on tonight. But if they don't, then we would see a little bit of a retrace back into the range, continuation to the upside. Let's just go over to Bitcoin for a split second now. We've got the futures market starting very shortly, ladies and gentlemen gentlemen here we go one more minute until futures and this is where we start seeing the behavior here we go let me just bring this down ever so slightly there it is right there okay move that across bitcoin snaps back down again futures markets off we go ladies and gentlemen futures are now open vwap right there here we go so no delta at the lows right there ladies and gentlemen not seeing the delta I'm not, I don't, hmm, it's not giving me what I think it's going to do. 436 Bitcoin volume delta right there, not showing that much strength. New York futures markets are now open. Let's see how New York responds to today's news about the unemployment claims coming in less than what they had expected at 250,000. It came in at 243,000. Is Bitcoin going to do the dirty? Will it test that 800 EMA? There's no liquidity down here. But remember, the market maker needs to give traders a reason to step in. Okay. So the liquidity is up here. Will it go down to move up? It's consistent with the US Brinks. We've had the Brinks spike lower and we want them to come up into here. This is what we want. We want the 21,700 zone because if they can get to the 21,700 zone, then Bitcoin's going to flush through and hit that liquidity at 1,400 Bitcoin at 21,920 and the 22,000 zone. Let's see if they do it. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got some movement in the chart. Here we go. Here we go. I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this. Oh, goodness, man. I am working up a sweat. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Are we all good whilst we're waiting for the futures markets to get to the swing of things? Is everybody well today? It's good to be back. And Coutinho for the Philippines. Give me a second, my brother, because Bitcoin's going to start doing some very interesting price action right now. Sit tight for a second. And we're going to start seeing some movement. News announcements tomorrow. They can only set everything up today in preparation for a move. Because if... The Fed's going to be hawkish and Powell says, yes, we are going to increase interest rates. Bitcoin is going to drop first. Then upon declaration of that, then Bitcoin should come up because then that would give the dollar the chance to come down. We need the hawkish stance by the Fed. 
Liquidity still staying static at 21,920, ladies and gentlemen. VWAP is holding in this zone. Let's see if we do actually get it. Can you tell us the significance of a blue vector candle? I see it everywhere where the reversals happen. Shall I consider it as a reversal indicator? Listen, when you're looking for the blue vector candle as a reversal indicator, here is an example. Blue vector candle right there. It's a stopping volume candle. Notice how you had one here and one here and then one here. Which one do you take? Yeah? You've got to remember that you've got to be paying attention to the next zones in the chart where Mr. Market Maker is going to induce traders. Had you have gone long in this area here, you would have been stopped out. But what would you have been aware of? You would have been aware of the green vector candle zone right here where there was a gap. And of course, today with the Patreons, when we're talking about the logic of the retracement of the vector candle by 50%, and when they come back to the liquidity later on, they recover that zone, impactful move to the upside, they come back into that range and fulfill that liquidity, and they did exactly the same right here as well. So, what I'm saying to you is when you use the blue vector candle, make sure that you have seen an aggressive move happen to the downside. Look at the volume bars down below. Not that one, but look at this here. One, two, three hits lower. The blue vector candle was giving us the understanding that things were going to potentially change. Then the stopping volume candle comes in with the blue vector down at the lows. The green vector brings price back up into the recovery of the vector candles in this zone right here. Now, let's just quickly go over to Bitcoin. Looks like it wants to hold out and move and do something. I'm not seeing the movement just yet, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not seeing it. The VWAP is holding very well. Let me just go over to Bitcoin on the XO charts itself. Testing that VWAP right in that zone. What's the delta saying? 11 mm percent. -hmm, so it's not that much of an aggressive move down lower. Start of this candle, CDV, CVD is trading at its highs. We would expect it to come back down. We've got interest down at the lows here as well. Is there any imbalances in the chart potentially? Let me just go back into the chart itself. It's holding this 200 EMA. Dominance of the dollar, what's it saying? Screaming back up, guys. Do you know what? Dollar is absolutely despicable, man. It ain't stopping. This thing just does not stop. It's the only asset I know that goes up continuously. Honestly, that just goes to show you, ladies and gentlemen, the pressure that the dollar is putting on assets across the board. Nothing can go up if the dollar keeps on moving up, ladies and gentlemen. And Bitcoin usually has a tendency to move against the dollar itself. But eventually the Bitcoin, sorry, the Bitcoin, Bitcoin always ends up sticking to its narrative and goes lower against the dollar itself. Okay. What else is going on here? When does price leave an imbalance without recovering it? Great question. It's not about not recovering it. It's about having the patience to wait and see it actually getting recovered. I remember a conversation not so long ago that a vector candle that appeared in Bitcoin in February before the run-up, okay, for six months, didn't even look back. But then it came back into it. So the vector candle in principle itself will get recovered. It's just working out the time. It's the when. When is it going to do it? That's the thing. Here we go. Here we go. Violet vector candle appearing at the lows. It doesn't look like the commitment's coming in right now. Are they going to try and force price lower, try and tap down in here? We haven't had a test of the daily open, which is important for us because if Bitcoin doesn't test the daily open, then that is a good sign. But more importantly, if this liquidity right here disappears, then we'll know that these orders are spoofs. They're holding that VWAP right there, ladies and gentlemen. We want to see Bitcoin come up. But if it doesn't come up, these orders in principle should disappear. See this here? is exits they're closing those orders but they seem to be static they don't need they don't look like they're going to be removed anytime soon if they do start to remove these orders then we can anticipate that bitcoin is going to come down now we're seeing some movement but nothing to get excited about ladies and gentlemen we'll be going into 3 p.m which is the magic hour remember that why is my trading view say tesla is down 66 percent that is crazy tesla can't be down 66 percent here we go here we go. Nice movement. Moving up with Bitcoin. Still can't make it. We've got a poll in the channel. What does the poll say? Have you liked the stream? Have you liked the stream? No. Tino. <laughs> I like that. Will Smith the stream, ladies and gentlemen. We don't like the stream. We want to Will Smith that stream. <laughs> Okay, look, here we go. Collection of Delta, 354 Bitcoin absorbed. Then we've also got 253 Bitcoin coming in. And we've also got this one currently at 145 Bitcoin. Not enough for me to say, yep, we're going to get ready to move up. It's just a bit of a bold move. We are five minutes into the markets itself. So we're waiting for New York to really get grips with what's been going on in terms of the news announcements. I ain't seeing it. 
I ain't seeing it just yet. Recovery of the pink vector holding that 200 EMA on the five minute time frame. Now listen, for all the new guys coming into the channel itself, the hybrid system is a system that's designed for short term day traders. And of course, you're great for scalpers, but you can use it for higher time frames. So what is your higher time frame? Is it the one hour, the four hour, the, the, the daily, the weekly? You have to apply it in relation to the time frame that you are trading. So if you're waiting for a vector candle to be recovered on the daily time frame itself, let's just look at it right now. Look at this. Daily time frame. The principle says that we would expect Bitcoin to come up and recover this red vector candle. Why? It's an imbalance. There are imbalance of orders. There are people with orders waiting in this zone. There are people with liquidation points inside of those zones. So if we look at the chart, 25,300, we currently have ourselves $19 billion worth of liquidations up there. 25,500. All right. Where does that put us? 25,300. Sorry. That puts us in this zone up here. So that means that it's a full recovery of the vector candle and more importantly, the recovery of the violet, sorry, of the vector candle wick in this zone. Principle would have it that we would expect them to move back up into this zone. They rejected the 50 EMA. They haven't even tested the 50 EMA on this moved out. So we could be in line for a retrace back up, but that's the daily. How long are you going to be in a trade for? Because Bitcoin could come down before it comes back up. It hasn't hit last week's low just yet. They've tried to, but they moved away from it. So you can have the patience and the tolerance to sit through that move. They'll recover the vector. The same way we said to them, will they recover these green vectors? They recovered those vectors. The same way we pulled up the monthly time frame and we said, will they recover the vectors? Yes, they do. Green vector candle right here, violet. We've got six days until the month ends, ladies and gentlemen. If this candlestick turns into a red vector candle, then there's a good chance that the next month we'll see price coming back up with aggression. But if it turns and stays as a violet vector candle, the come up in the next month might not be so aggressive. I want it to be a red vector. It must be a red vector for me to agree that I'm going to see price moving back up. That's what I want to see. And this is on the monthly time frame, ladies and gentlemen. The same way a vector candle gets recovered on the monthly is the same way it's going to get recovered on the smaller time frames. Let's just zoom in and see what Bitcoin is getting up to right now. Not seeing the movement, and I believe it's going to happen at 3 p.m., ladies and gentlemen. US Brink session looks like it's finalizing recovery of the red ve violet vector candle holding that 200 EMA. We need to see a break above the 200, sorry, the 50 EMA on the five minute time frame. Where's the liquidity at on the book map itself? Holding. They're doing something in here. Let me just zoom in a little bit just to put things into perspective. Let's see what we've got. 843 Bitcoin absorbed in that zone. There is a collection of orders. I think traders are being trapped in this zone right now. Shorts are being trapped inside of this zone. <laughs> oh, God. You long Bitcoin. Oh, my days. Did Tesla do a stock split? Tesla just had a stock split three for one. That's why it's down 66. Okay. And 3 p.m. at what time? Which is in principle in the next... 20 minutes, 3 p.m. UK time. Look, liquidity is still static up there, ladies and gentlemen. This could be a promise. 21,920. If the liquidity disappears before the hour is done, we would know it's a fake move in the charts. There's a reason why there's 1,400 Bitcoin. That's where the money is at, ladies and gentlemen. 1,500 Bitcoin at the top right there at 22K. That's where the money is at. Principle would say if Bitcoin actually breaks into that range right there, they would absorb that liquidity. Then we would anticipate retail to step in, which would mean Mr. Market Maker would be getting ready to release the price to the downside. Okay? Let me just te check Tesla for a second for my guys. Here we go. Look at that. Look at that for Tesla. Nice little gap up. Reverse back down. Oh my days, taking a nosedive. Absolute nosedive. Vector candle principle should come into play with this. Nice stock split. Big gap up. Coming back down. Vector candle zone at the lows right here. Be careful with a stock split, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like all money is happening over there. NASDAQ, S&P. Rolling over on the five minute time frame. Dollar dominance. Is it still happening? Dollar dominance is still playing out. Euro USD is doing reasonably well, given that the dollar dominance is actually moving. Here we go. Bitcoin still holding in that range. It looks like we're going to have ourselves a move later on, ladies and gentlemen. All I'm saying to you guys is this. This area is very important. 
between now and the 22 zone. What they do with the chart inside this area, there is an accumulation happening right now. Principal would say that we would expect them to come and eat this liquidity at 23,000, sorry, 19,300 with $23 billion worth of longs coming in. But Mr. Market Maker needs to make the retail trader believe that that's not the case. He's already given them that belief with these spikes to the high up here. So a recovery of these imbalanced wicks up here would see price looking to falter inside of this zone right here one hit two hits three and we are now waiting for that narrative to come in still there ladies and gentlemen they're adding to it it's 1579 bitcoin at 22 1387 bitcoin at the 21 920 zone not seeing anything down here the vwap itself is doing great and holding price in this zone will how many of you believe it bitcoin's going to come up to 22 at the top from from the end of this stream going into tonight's session how many of you believe that how many of you believe it usdt dominance chart itself let's have a look there what does that tell us green vector candle at that zone that tells us that they've been putting their liquidity into usdt now we want to start making some money on crypto so principal would say we would see it roll back down and that would lead bitcoin to move back up that's what we're looking for ladies and gentlemen but we're waiting for that moment in time for bitcoin to do it here we go still consolidating holding out and notice uk did exactly the same thing guys uk hasn't done anything so is the us going to bring the fire that's the question will the us session do it did Bitcoin just complete three drops to the downside? This is what we're looking for. Wick, wick, stopping volume candle, violet vector candle right here. Does the principle say that Bitcoin should go up from this zone? The liquidity is still static, ladies and gentlemen. And we've got another two more minutes until the start of a new vector. Sorry, a new 15 minute candle. This is important for us. Let's see if they can do it. We want to see that movement, man, because the dollar dominance is just going to be a pain in the back. And if they don't make any moves today, tomorrow will be a slow day, ladies and gentlemen, until Powell has the conversation at 3 p.m. All right. So they could just accumulate assets, accumulate Bitcoin in this range. And Bitcoin's going to stay tight in this range from now until tomorrow. Be aware of that, ladies and gentlemen. OK, right then. What else are you guys saying? So Staghorn says 22.8, then a fake move up, then drop. Okay, then 22.8. That would eat all this liquidity and then a drop to the downside. Where would that liquidity reside? Let's just go into the 12-hour chart a second. Run our liquidation heat map in this zone. Here we go. What is close? Let's take a zoom and look. The nearest pool of liquidity sits at 21,800, where there is $757 million worth of short liquidations. So mark off on the chart, 21,800, ladies and gentlemen. 21,800 is where the liquidation points reside for the shorts. There's $700 million worth of liquidations. Look at the zone that we had marked off by the principle of one hit, two hit, three hits. Okay? If Bitcoin holds this zone, the narrative would say that we would see it come up, eat that liquidity, and then in initiate a reversal back down again but down below is where we need to be aware of 20,925 773 liquidations for long so we're at an even split that's all the way down here man it's quite far so i don't really need to be paying attention to that just yet bitcoin trying to hold out in this area man what a story Dominance of the dollar keeps on going up, it's faltering, but it just keeps moving. If you want to know an asset that keeps moving up, this is what you look at. The dollar dominance keeps on going and it doesn't stop. That just tells you what the story is. How can you have an asset that just moves up like this? It's absolutely phenomenal. Look on the 15 hour chart. Look at this. Look at that bad boy wick. Complete move up. Three hours time, we would have a new candlestick, which would then say that we would expect it to recover it all the way down. But the problem we got is, is we've got this zone right here, which we need to be aware of, which is a wick. That's going to be a problem for us. This is consistent with topping behavior. Look at that phenomenal wick in the chart on the dollar dominance. It needs to come down, man. Even the candlestick gapped up in this zone. He's working that wick. Now it needs to come back down. Unbelievable, man absolutely phenomenal this dollar dominance here we go we got some movement in the chart ladies and gentlemen what did we say for you to mark off here we go nice nice movement by bitcoin here we are let's get the book map up for a split second 
slowly coming up not really giving me that flavor just yet 1300 bitcoin still at that point 1500 bitcoin at the 22,000 zone that would be a dream for anyone what we got here bitcoin bear flagging okay bitcoin 15 minute candles are up that's correct what are you guys saying in this chat right now s p and nasdaq little fall okay then youtubers are saying bear flag okay then if youtube says bear flag what do we say as the hybrid? What do we look for? We don't care about bear flags, bull flags, no flags, your flags, their flags. We care about movement. All right. We know what points in the chart they like to move. This is the US Brink session. Now we're going into the start of the New York session itself, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. We expect movement. Let's see what they do. If the bear flag principle is going to come in, we would expect them to hit this liquidity. Why can't I exploit a move from this zone to the upside? Tell me why I wouldn't want to exploit that. Where would the bear flag principle be? In other words, you would have made your money before the bear flag comes into play. 1,400 Bitcoin coming in at the 21,920. We know there's liquidity. $750 million worth of long liquid, sorry, short liquidations at the 21,700 zone, 21,800 zone. That's where we know there's the liquidation points. This would be a zone of interest for retail to start buying. Okay. This would be the zone. Let's see if Bitcoin has it. What time is it right now, guys? We've got 13 minutes until the start of a new one hour candle. Let me go into the one hour time frame to understand what the one hour time frame has been doing. There you go. Now we've got a problem here, guys. The one hour time frame. As much as it looks like it's tested the 13 EMA and the 5, comes down, hits the 50, recovery of the green vector candle, the start of the next hour candle needs to see a strong move up. Otherwise, it will recover the wick, consolidate, and then look to try and come back up because the narrative is showing. Hit one, hit two. We want one more hit. One more hit to tell us if it's going to be the case that they're going to come in towards that liquidity at the 21,800 zone. It's doing a good job of holding so far. Let me go into the 30-minute time frame. 30-minute time frame looks like it's stalling in this area here. Red vector candle is that? Maybe, maybe not. No, but the wick up here is an interesting point. The Brinks has been very nice to us today, ladies and gentlemen. Come back into recovery of Asia's imbalance right there. Bitcoin has a hard time getting up if it can't hold this zone, ladies and gentlemen, going into the 50-minute time frame. All right, consolidation. They're holding out. They're waiting. It's too good to be true, isn't it? 1455 Bitcoin there. These orders are staying static in the chart, ladies and gentlemen. That is a good sign. If we start seeing liquidity coming here, then they're going to start taking out this liquidity and then starting to look to get filled at a lower price. The book is imbalanced to limit sales at the top, so we expect price to move up. That's what we're saying. What are you guys got down here? Let me have a look at your comments. Let's have a look down here. Oh, man, it's starting to falter. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> nothing is happening he's just making it interesting that is correct ladies and gentlemen i am making it interesting but we have an understanding of where the money is 1457 bitcoin is stacked at 21,920, and this is all we're waiting for we're waiting for the chart to come into that zone <laughs> straight pipping <laughs> i like that comment bro What's this? Crypto mechanical. Always go to the close gap. I'll wait for the short as we are in a downtrend. And remember, EMA bands are rolling over. This is true. But like I said, when you're looking to exploit movement, whether it's to the upside or to the downside, the narrative of EMAs may take a little while. If you're looking at the EMAs on the five minute time frame, then you're going to see expansion, contraction and what have you happening all the time. So you can see there's something sinister happening inside of this zone. You've got a red vector candle fails to go lower. The candlesticks happen to go afterwards. It didn't happen here. Violet vector candle fails to go lower. The candles then push back price back up again. If price can't get above the 50, Bitcoin will roll over and test that 800 EMA, which will hit this green vector candle. Always mark off in the chart the candle, the vector candle presence, because in that way you're not going to be surprised by anything. Okay? As long as you've got your structure of price, then you would expect price to start rolling in your desired direction based on where you think it's going to go by the utility of the hybrid system itself. 
But as it stands, we've seen hits one, we've seen hits two. Would that be the third hit or are we expecting yet another hit? 50 EMA coming lower, 200 EMA compressing. We're expecting the move to happen, okay? That's what we're looking for. 3 p.m. would see the magic hour where the markets would have absorbed all the news announcements and then everything would then go into a trading day. But remember, Powell is having a conversation tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, all right? And when Powell has that conversation, which is right here, the markets might actually not do anything until he talks. And this could be it. Okay? Gold. Let's have a look at gold. Nose dive on gold. That just pretty much tells you exactly the dominance of the dollar. Gold down, dollar up. Of course it's up. This slow move up is just going to continue with the dollar itself. They'll hit the daily open. Happy days. Daily open will get hit on the dollar dominance. It's just too strong. They're just getting rid of all their assets and putting it all into dollar itself. US CAD moving up slightly. Dollar yen, off it goes. These sharp moves are in preparation for Powell tomorrow because if he says, yep, we're going to be hawkish, dollar will tank. So they're going to try and get their money's worth right now. And Bitcoin's doing a great job against the dominance of the dollar, ladies and gentlemen. Do you know what? Dollar is a rug pull, in my opinion. I think it's going to be a rug pull. Here we go. Are we getting that movement? Let's see. Bookmap, what are you saying to me? Still not coming away from that zone. But the liquidity is still there. As long as these two areas right here on the book map are present, it leads us to understand that Bitcoin should still be coming up. Here we go. We've got some movement, ladies and gentlemen. We've got that movement coming in. No liquidity right here. You see there's 76 Bitcoin right there at 21,760. We want to see liquidity coming in at that point. So then we would understand that this move is going to start making more tracks to the upside. We've got 356 Bitcoin at 21,800. Remember, this is a liquidation point. $750 million worth of short liquidations will get eaten at this point, which would then solidify the third hit to the upside where we would get more information about the move in Bitcoin. Is it going to do it, ladies and gentlemen? Will Bitcoin actually do the move? Will it do the dirty? Will it pull it off? Happy days if it does, ladies and gentlemen. But I really hope that it doesn't remove the liquidity in this chart. Come on, Bitcoin. Make the move happen. Make that move happen. What's going on, Fetty? Come on, Bitcoin. What's Ethereum doing? Is Ethereum making the moves? Consolidation, man. They're controlling this very, very well. Let me just quickly go into USDT. USDT needs to roll over. That's the zone we want USDT to come into. That will tell us that traders are now seeking Bitcoin. Market maker needs to give traders a reason to believe that that's going to be the case. Is this the start of it, ladies and gentlemen? Going in, that's on the five-minute time frame, 50-minute time frame. Where are we at? Big push up on the 15-minute time frame. Look at the indecision right here by retail traders. I don't know if it's going to go up or down. Test of the 50. Yippee-ki-yay, ladies and gentlemen. Starting to make that move. Have we got our read correct, ladies and gentlemen? Delta's coming in. What we got? 582 Bitcoin hitting at that zone right there. Are they going to start adding the liquidity up here, man? Come on, Bitcoin. Come back into the recovery of that red vector candle wick right there, ladies and gentlemen. Look, pay attention to it. Bitcoin looks like it wants to do it, man. It better do it before I make my exit, ladies and gentlemen. Back up above the 50 EMA. That's what we want to see. Come on, BTC. Make it happen. Oops. What am I doing? There we go. Ah, no. Don't open that, Tino. No. Don't do that. Oh my god, no, 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 no. Come on. There we go. Delta's coming in. 531 Bitcoin in that zone right there. Happy days. It sound all good. Yep, sound looks like it's really well right now. Okay, so Delta Collection, 538, pushing price at the lows. That's what we want to see. Bitcoin coming up. We want that 21800 zone, ladies and gentlemen, because we know there's money stacked at that point. Yes, I am a sports commentator. That's the truth. I'm the only guy that speaks at speeds in the game of cryptocurrency. You give me a price point, I will read it out at speed, ladies and gentlemen. You can see right now we've still got 1,381 Bitcoin at that zone. 21,920 could be the first point of interest by Mr. Market Maker, but we know at 21,800 that is where the liquidity resides. 750 million Bitcoin short liquidations at 21,803. If Bitcoin does maintain this movement and the liquidity doesn't come in at the lows, we are going to eat this liquidity and we will see 
a very fast move in the chart, ladies and gentlemen. And that is the truth right there. But as long as the liquidity stays there, we will then have the patience to sit and wait for that narrative to come into play. We have got four more minutes into the start of a new one hour candle. Bitcoin is getting busy, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready for the magic hour, 3 p.m. The market would have absorbed all of the news announcements. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. There's that madness. When we speak into speculation, we anticipate Mr. Market Maker to draw the retail trader to step into the chart. We already had the clue of that with the liquidity at the upside right here. Bitcoin needs to maintain this narrative above the 50 EMA. Happy days if that's going to be the case. Is this going to be the third hit to the upside? Coming into the recovery of the wick up here with the green vector candle, it would solidify the first hit, the second hit, and finally the third hit. If the third hit comes in lower, ladies and gentlemen, Bitcoin will roll. That's the truth right there. If they can't get above this wick up here at 21,780, and we need to just understand something. At 21,800, $750 million worth of short traders are going to be panicking. What's going to happen? Buy to cover. Who's going to be buying up their positions that they're going to be closing? Miss the market maker. Because you can't buy if no one sells and you can't sell if no one buys. Quickly roll over to Exo Charts a second. What's the Delta saying? 31% Delta, 24 minutes into that. Only 8 million in terms of volume transaction that has happened right there. That's good news for us. We want to see that continuously coming back up again. One more test of previous day's high. Would see that Bitcoin move to the upside. And then I would let you guys be and you would have yourselves a wonderful day in the market. Here we go. I'm going to stay with you until we actually get that movement, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see. So you're saying pump. You've missed the move, my friend. You have missed the move. The liquidity is there. Look at Mr. Bitcoin. Mr. Market Maker showing his hand. 21,800. This is what we want. We want that liquidity. They're keeping it static in the chart. They ain't going anywhere. But be careful. If they do come close towards it and they stall, then we would expect them to remove it as a false move. Here we go. Trading away from the VWAP itself, ladies and gentlemen. 644 Bitcoin in that zone. We want to see another Delta bubble coming in. Is this going to turn into a green vector candle in the next two minutes? It's, ladies and gentlemen if it turns into a green vector then there's a bit of a problem here we go ladies and gentlemen making that move 21800 come on eat the liquidity for the retail trader happy days come on mr bitcoin make that movement third hit to the upside third hit mr market maker showing his hand two minutes into the start of a one hour candle is it going to do it ladies and gentlemen type one if you think it's going to break that 21800 and eat that 750 million dollars worth of liquidity in the chart there'll be a bizarre circumstance if it is there it is ladies and gentlemen speed of the candle patrons remember in today's live stream talking about the speed of the candle coming back up look what happens now one more minute if this candle can't close strong it's done simple as the candle can't close strong, it's done, which means that it will look to sharply come back down because they're going back into the same zone that they had pulled away from. Look, 1,424 Bitcoin, this liquidity has to be eaten. They're trying to get filled in sooner than later. Here we go, 1,465 Bitcoin, 1,576 Bitcoin, it's moving, coming into the recovery of the wick, ladies and gentlemen, it's getting busy. One more minute until the final of the one hour candle where 3 p.m. magic hour takes its place. Here we go. Come on, Bitcoin. Show me your worth, man. Show me that we got the read of the market maker intact. Mr. Market Maker can't fool the hybrid traders, ladies and gentlemen. If you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe because then you'll be getting this fire every day. We said it. Today, we will bring the fire. Bitcoin is bringing the fire. If you've managed to make yourself a penny or two based on the understanding of the hybrid system, happy days. Always pay yourself. Remember what we just said. We want the candle to finish stronger. 22 seconds would lead. Here we go. 19 Still got that liquidity up there. They're adding to that liquidity. They're stalling at that zone right there. 22K, they're not adding that much Bitcoin in that zone right there. Seem to be getting busy at that zone right here at the 21,920. They're adding, taking away. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. 3 p.m. is now in play. Here we go. New one hour candle. Look, that's a big move. That is a big move. That's a nice momentous move. Here we go. Recovery of the wick right there. We want to see it come back into this. So 21,800 is where the liquidity sits, ladies and gentlemen. Has Mr. Market Maker notified the retail trader now it's time to buy? Has Bybit notified you? Has Crow notified you? Crypto.com, Binance told you that Bitcoin is up. OK, this is now the setup to get traders to buy. How long is it going to be moving for is the quick different question. Most traders in the hybrid system will be anticipating shorts to happen in this zone. Remember, the liquidity is at twenty one eight hundred. That's where seven hundred and fifty million dollars worth of short liquidations are currently in the chart. Euro USD ain't making no movements. Dollar dominance. Where is it at? Here we go. It looks like Bitcoin's having a party. Dollar is starting to slow down. That's good news. Euro starting to consolidate. Bitcoin is just making the move happen. Euro, sorry, Ethereum 
slowly moving up. Haven't looked at the liquidation points for Ethereum. Let's just go into the high block itself. Refresh that in the chart. Starting to slow it down. Here we go. Where's the liquidity? There it is. $757 million worth of long li short liquidations at 21825 Where We're at 21800 That's what we're looking for, ladies and gentlemen. 21,800. Come on, Bitcoin. Hurry up. New one hour candle. New York, show me your flavor. Show me your fire. Here we go. Come on. Where's the book map? Make it happen. There's nice move up. Delta's at the lows. That's good news. It needs to come up here. We've got 612 Bitcoin at this point right here at 21,746. It needs to go. There's nothing down here. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The second Bitcoin hits that 21,800. It's yippee ki -yay, ladies and gentlemen. I will love you and I will leave you and you will then witness the hybrid system in real time, ladies and gentlemen. Full recovery of the wick. Bitcoin needs to eat that liquidity. Happy days. Come on. Make it happen. Pattern watchers, where are you? If you are taking trades, ladies and gentlemen, there's no financial advice. It's just common sense. Always pay yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Always, always pay yourselves. New York's getting busy. New York is bringing that fire. Here we go. 21,800. I will rest my case. I will flatline, completely disappear off the face of the earth when you see the recovery of the liquidity and the proof. That Mr. Market Maker doesn't care about your opinion of price. He doesn't care about the miners. He doesn't care about who brought Bitcoin, who sold Bitcoin. He cares about where you put your money. And that, as it is right now, says at 21825, there is nearly three quarters of a billion dollars worth of short liquidations. You don't think he wants to get that liquidity? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I will be very surprised if that is going to be the case. But other than that, you know what? I'm going to love you and I'm going to leave you if you are new to the channel. Yes, I am mad, my friend. I am crazy. I'm absolutely back. Yeah, I can't say it, but you know what the story is. Look, before I leave you guys, the liquidity is in front of us. OK, 21,920, there's 1,326 Bitcoin. Above that, 22,000, there's 1,573 Bitcoin. The principle would say that we would see Mr. Market Maker run price into that direction. If he doesn't do it now, he's going to do it later on. But only if the liquidity stays in the chart. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are new, be sure to like and subscribe. I will check in with you beautiful people later on tonight. Take care of yourself, pattern watchers. Pay yourselves. Your boy's out. Peace.